Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about the Disney Teen Doll animation. Also to note, this is the fourth episode of this entire knitting tutorial series. It's completely okay if you haven't watched the previous three episodes. It's just that I would like to speed up the process by not explaining things I've repeated in the past three series. But eventually we're going to start from scratch. This is also probably the last episode of this entire series. I also feel a little bit exhausted or tedious repeating this simple concept over and over again. However, we probably won't really stop here because there are some additional tutorial adding more details like curves and or hairs uh, onto such kind of model related with cloth. Anyway, let's start. So here we in Blender. And I've already made this uh, ugly doll model, which I believe you can make a much better one. Uh, in addition to the mirror modifier, I also add a subdivision surface to smooth out uh, this entire mesh to make it look better. Uh, but this is a very important step because it uh, affects the polygon size, which in turn affects the scale of our unit uh, in the final result. So. I want to keep that within geometry nodes instead of in the modifier panel. That's why I disabled that. Uh, I'm going to instance this knitting unit as you've seen in the last three tutorials. Okay. So here, let's start with geometry node tree. I'm not going to add a node tree here because I'm going to add a hair object. So make sure you are selecting this mesh object and the shift A goes to curve and there is a, an empty hair option. So that you will add a curve or hair objects within the outliner. And uh, this curve will be a parent of this uh, knitting doll uh, mesh. So I'm going to clear this parent because that no longer matters. So let's clear the parent. Okay, and we can hide this doll the unit. Let's go to the noting. And by default, this curve contains a uh, surface deform node tree for uh, sculpture, but uh, we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to input this doll so that I no longer need to see that within the outliner. And I'm also going to import this knitting unit and I can hide that into a collection. So I have this doll within this node tree and let's add a face point. Uh, you can download all these kind of presets for free from the link in the description. So this face points is generating all these kind of uh, points for every polygons. And let's take a point instance. And let's instance our knitting unit. Uh, this knitting unit uh, will look very jacky. Uh, one reason is that we need to turn on this additional subdivision surface uh, within the settings. Also, we are going to resample it, maybe 15, so it will smooth out. Three is the maximum. So anyway, it looks like this. And in order to actually render all this now here, you have to realize the instance. And for better manipulation of rotation, so let's just plug this rotation into place. And you may select the XYZ and the weigh in the edges uh, for better alignment. Okay. And uh, we can add a subdivision surface here within node tree. As you see, uh, by adding more subdivision surface, we are adding amounts of knitting units onto this mesh. Okay. In the last three tutorials, we are adding a lot of subdivision surface in order to add in a lot of details. But this time, we are going to do that opposite. We are going to ensure this entire geometry is very large. And now this knitting unit is pretty small. So let's add a mass into this scale and uh, let's multiply that with a large enough number. Okay. Something like this. Maybe add one more subdivision surface. Okay, okay. so something like this is good enough. And the uh, next step is to fill out all these kind of holes. I've talked about uh, this concept uh, in the last tutorial about knitting on text. Uh, 
to fill out the holes, we are going to do these critical connections to split a single curve into three. So let's take a look with our knitting unit. And if you plug these critical connections uh, into place uh, and decrease this radius, then you can see there is one curve into three. And we are basically going to repeat this process uh, to fill out or making this entire row or knitting unit much thicker than uh, its original size. Okay, uh, and uh, to know that uh, this currently it takes about zero point uh, less than one milliseconds. Okay, but if you add these helical connections after this step, it takes about ten times more. Okay. Uh, but the result is essentially the same. Okay, uh, there are some details uh, making a difference, but you probably. Do not worry about that at this stage. So let's just add that before. So we have this uh, a single knitting unit being split into seven now. And let's add a float range so that we can set up the rotation. Okay, and we can repeat this process to make it even thicker. And here, in order to decrease this radius, so let's take a uh, value position and I'll probably exponent by three. And let's take a six, five, four, something like that. Okay. And another way uh, to do all these entire steps is instead of using the strand, we can use the strip and we can set the curve radius. Okay. And uh, we can take another value position to decrease its scale. Maybe uh, one. In this case, so these are the ways to do that. So we take this realize instance, and now if we look at this entire mesh, it looks like this. Okay, uh, you can definitely add more details, but that's basically the idea, and make it thicker and so. On. There's also one probability that you can add some randomness because we are going to add randomness for every uh, strand. So instead of doing a randomness here before instancing, we have to do that afterwards. So let's take a set of position, uh, which we can add some noise. So let's take a noise 3D. If you plug this into the offset, then immediately everything is being deformed with the same noise, which I do not like this result. So I want to give a different noise for all these kind of splines. So let's take a spline input, which give you a spline index, and we plug that into the seed. And now it becomes very noisy. Uh, and it's not only noisy, it also moves some splines out of the frame or its original mesh. So let's take a spline parameter and we're taking the float curve. Uh, float curve, float curve. Yes. We're taking this float curve and we set the start and the end to zero. So start and end will not move. Uh, we plug that into the fall. Although fall and the scale is essentially the same thing, it's just the two math multiply. Okay. It's basically the same. And here, let's take a value position to decrease this noise because it's a little bit too large. Uh, and uh, I think uh, maybe add five, uh, three, two, one, uh, something like that is enough. Adding a little bit of variances is the key of a good animation. And you can also add a little bit more frequencies to that uh, does not really matter. Okay. Just to know the the actual noise effects uh, largely depends on the amount of resample you have for every curve. And if you have too much resampling, it will add too much detail, which actually costs a lot in the performance, as you see here. Okay. So you may want to uh, decide uh, whether you really need this much details. But this is probably it, as you probably see, that there is no holes inside. And if you render that, it will be quite beautiful at some level. You can also use the strand. 
Uh, it's actually very interesting to look at it. Okay. Talking about the animation, uh, it's essentially just a fork as you've seen uh, in the past. So I just want to make a, a simple one. So let's take a mix node, which will bring a mix float. So we know the target factor is 9. So we start from 0. And you can use any kind of fork, whether it's a noise fork or proximity fork. Uh, it does not really matter. Uh, in this particular case, I think I'm going to use the directional fork. So if I plug this directional fork into the factor, which will output a value from 0 to 1. And just by actually instantaneously, you get this result of essentially 0 and uh, 1. But you also see there is kind of weird results. This is again because of this set position uh, with this noise. Because even if you do not have a skill, the mesh is inside. So once they are displaced, they give this kind of random result. So to solve it, what you can potentially do is you can also mix a result uh, within this noise. So you can kill this noise when the direction of fork is zero. So you cannot see it now. And you can manipulate this direction. You can make that into the Z axis. And just by manipulating it, uh, in fact, now you can kill this noise for the moment for better performance. Uh, you can increase this skill, maybe one. And by animating it, you can see this result. And you can see it's the effect on the noises as well. It may not be very obvious because the noise will probably be very small at this stage, but you will see that in the final result. So this is the animation part. Next, I would like to add some additional detail or secondary detail into this setup. So basically tiny hairs uh, in addition to these strands. So there are many different ways to do that. We can add hairs on the original mesh. So we are going to use the point distribute, distribute, which is essentially just the distribute points on face. But the difference is I can set the amount. So let's take a 1500. We have 1500 points. And let's take a point instance. So we can instance uh, tiny hairs. So let's take a curve linear. And this curve linear is on X now. Let's make that onto Z axis without the center. And let's just take the value to one. We need the actual small hairs, otherwise it's actually too long. So let's take this rotation into rotation and let's decrease its scale. We take another value position. Value position. Making that 0.1 or maybe even lower. Something like that should be enough. So we take a realize instance and we can add some noise. There are many different ways to bend it. One way is that we can add a bend union, bend deform node. This bend deform node is essentially just the copying the code of simple deform modifier. So if you have a mesh, we have this simple deform modifier to really bend it. Of course, there is some more operation of this bend deform, but I just didn't add that in this node group because I I rarely use them but this is I think this is fine if you want to use it feel free to use this or another way essentially is just the same as we are adding noise so take a noise ready and uh, instead of adding a uniform noise for every of them take spline info into the seed, and we take a span parameter, and I take a float curve, factor into value, and the value into fourth. Uh, actually, this is fine with the factor. Should be should be good enough. And we also need a count and increasing the frequency. I think that should be enough. 
but uh, you can see it's kind of very ugly because the frequency has to be extremely high in order to make it work since we're working with something so tiny so another way that you can potentially do is to capture the position attribute which is a vector so we take this vector take the position and plug that into the custom vector this will actually solve many problems so that's even in a low frequency we're going to have a very nice result another thing issue you may find is that this noise scale is too large so we take another value position just to decrease the scale maybe five something like this we can also decrease the scale one three two Parameter things you can deal in your free time. So now let's combine these two geometry together. So we join geometry. And I want to use a single set radius to control both curves. So let's plug this set curve radius and take the value position. So now we are adding these tiny heads into the mesh. And you can just add in the amount of instances so that you will see more heads. Maybe uh, Five thousands, or you can add more and more and more. Okay. But uh, we also would like to do the animation with it. So the way we can do is basically the same. You again use an additional mix node and maybe mix with four, and we can decrease the noise as well. So we multiply with this fourth of spline parameter and just mix with it so that at the beginning we do not really see all these tiny hairs clearly enough unless this fourth actually covers them to maybe make this offset to negative one so we can see Half of the model does not have anything and uh, another half of the model is actually merging all these tiny curves. So these are just the uh, ways to think. Uh, there are many variations or many more things that you can potentially do with it. So I hope this is not really a complex tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.